Are you creating a custom illustration for the first time and you want to make sure you're doing it absolutely right? Hi creatives, today we're going to go from the client's brief to preparing your illustration, sketching, creating it in Adobe Illustrator, and then actually sending it to the client in the right format and file export settings. Illustration is such a fun and like creatively fulfilling medium to me, and so I'm super excited to share my own process with you. The very first thing you want to know when you're working on an illustration project is the brief. And this has kind of two parts to it. So on the one hand, you have the very specific requirements. So things like, will it be digital or will it be print? What dimensions are they looking for? Is it going to be like a spot illustration, meaning it will have a lot of white around it? Or is it going to be, let's say, a full page where you want to make sure everything's going straight out to the edges? Uh, you also want to know the size of the artwork that they're looking for and any file formats that they're looking for. So if you're working with print, that's usually a PDF file and you might be adding bleed. So bleed is like a little edge that you add around your artwork that you want to extend your design across so that once it gets cut off at the printers, you're not cutting into your artwork and you're also not getting like a white edge around it by accident. If you're working in a digital format, you probably can either have a PNG file or an SVG file. And that really depends on the preferences of the client and the person who is, let's say, building the website, for example, where it will be used. The second part of the brief is kind of the setting and the wish list from the client. So it will be really different, the type of illustration that you create. If it will be for like a children's magazine or if it will be for a sports website. So you want to get an understanding of do they already have an in-house style that you're looking to kind of replicate? Are they looking for you to really use your own personal style to add to it? Is there maybe a certain motif? So let's say that they really want to include one of their products in the illustration. That type of requirement is something you need to know so that when you're creating sketches and suggestions, you can include that and make sure that the brief is fulfilled. Once you have the brief clear, it's time to move to the concepting stage. And I personally really like to do this with just sketches to the client. So if it's a really small project with a brand I've already worked with, I might already jump to creating final artwork or like suggested artwork. But especially if it's like a lot of deliverables or if it's very complex pieces, I like to show them the sketching stage first because that means I'm not going to put in hours and hours and hours into something that they're later going to say, well, this isn't a good fit. So the first thing I like to do is to think about the overarching idea or theme. So in the project we're going to work on today, I'm going to create a very cozy illustration for a local magazine. So it's going to be a, a horizontal or landscape version of an A4 page. So I know that's the format I have to work with. And the idea is to kind of showcase some of the local things that are going on, but not a specific company. So what I'm thinking is I would really like to incorporate something like a really cute bookstore front. My next step is to go and look for inspiration. So kind of references of what like a cute storefront could look like. And so I like to put all of those ideas into Milanote where I can then just kind of get an overview and start kind of getting my ideas flowing. I'm really liking how big these different windows are. And so when we're looking at the inspiration pictures, the things that I'm kind of most drawn to is how we have really, really cute items inside of the bookstore. And also how we have some of these arched storefronts. So um, I really like to incorporate something where we have a little bit more of a kind of magical feeling. So I really like this image with in the heart of Old Town. I think this is super cute and that's definitely something that I'd like to go for, but in my own illustration style. So what I like to do next is to start free sketching. And this is something that I prefer to do on my iPad. Uh, you can use Procreate, for example, which is what I tend to do with my just stylus pencil, or you can of course just do it on paper and that is equally valid. Whatever medium you're most comfortable with, use that because that's how I think we work the best and the most efficient. The reason I like to work on Procreate is because you can really like easily go back, you can sketch over things, you can create multiple layers and see how your artwork would be if you would change certain details. So I like the flexibility in that, but I've done a lot of sketching on paper as well. So at this stage, you could either share the sketches with your client. You could even share sketches plus a color palette to get an idea from them if that is something that they think would be a good fit. 
you probably know best this client you've probably gotten a bit of an insight into how used they are to working with designers if it's someone who's really used to working with designers you can probably just show them a sketch but if there's maybe a little bit of experience or maybe it's the first time working on a project like this they might have a really hard time visualizing what it might look like. So in that case, you might want to include some color palettes or like in this case where you color in part of the illustration to give them an idea of the final work. You want to make sure that the way that you're sketching and the way that you're gonna be working eventually is gonna be super easy to edit. So once we start working in Illustrator, we're gonna work with vectors and with line work. And that is super easy to change. If you are an illustrator who work in, let's say, a physical medium like watercolor, you'll want to make sure that you are really sharing each step of the process with your client. So you're not creating like a perfect watercolor artwork and then they end up completely changing the layout or having thoughts on it, which means you have to redo a lot of things that you can't just paint over. So my advice is, especially if you're working in a digital medium, just make it as easy as possible for yourself to make changes and edits if you get feedback. So once you have the final sketch that you feel really happy with and perhaps your client has also had a look and approved it, you can go and grab it and put it into Adobe Illustrator. Now in this case, because we're going to be setting it up for print, I'm going to be creating this artwork with the dimensions that we've set out, which is an A4 page, and then I'm going to add 5mm bleed to each side. I'm also going to make sure that the color settings are in CMYK and that I have a 300 DPI, which means that it has a dots per inch, 300 dots per inch so that just means it's a high quality so I really love using Illustrator because it is so flexible you have a lot of tools at your disposal when I'm creating this illustration I'm gonna be working a lot with the pen tool to create shapes and outlines and I'm also gonna be using the shape builder to kind of create more of those symmetrical elements that are like squares or circles for example and if you would want to create something very very digital looking then you could just work with those tools that are there because I want to create a bit more of a textured effect, I want to make sure that I'm using a brush effect. And so what I like to do is I like to go to a place like Envato Market or Creative Market and find a brush pack that I think fits the style of illustration that I'm creating. In this case, I found this really nice mid-century brush stroke pack. So I'm gonna use this one and download it. All I have to do once it's downloaded is I go into Adobe Illustrator, into my artboard, and I go to the brushes panel. And here I can go to the library and add just from the files that I downloaded in my downloaded section. This means that the brushes are now active in my document and I can start using them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the sketch on its own layer and I'm gonna lock that layer and lower the opacity. That way I have a reference for everything that I'm drawing, but I'm also able to see properly what I'm doing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the pen tool because I'm a lot more comfortable with the pen tool than with the brush tool since I'm working with like a trackpad uh, or a mouse and not with, let's say, a Wacom tablet. So I like to use the pen tool to basically replicate but clean up the line work that I did. And then I choose in the textured brush library the texture that I want. And I can then go in and tweak and test out different brushes and make sure that the line thickness is good, that it looks good and that everything is kind of working the way that I'm intending it to. Initially, I always work with a complete black stroke because I think this makes it a lot easier to see what I'm doing. And then I, once I have the black and white artwork, I can go in and I can color it also in a kind of shaded way. So that instead of creating basically every color uh, in the block that I'm thinking it should be um, and spending all that time coloring things in, I start to create kind of the colors in the gradients that I think, so like different shades of gray. And this helps me see where the light is coming from. It helps me see that it's gonna be the correct focal point. And that's really important when you're creating your illustration. Once I have that black and white artwork done, I can go and look for a color palette that I think would be a good fit. So Pinterest is a great place to go look for color palettes. You can also go to Color Hunt, Adobe Cooler. There's lots of places to help you find good color palettes. Um, I think as you work as an illustrator for a while, you start building up references that match your own style of illustration. So I have quite a few palettes that I'm already using and that I've been working with for a while. Let me know if you'd be interested in a kind of color palette picker video and how to create your own color palettes. And I'd love to do a video like that. 
I think the detail stage of your artwork is always when it comes to life. So I like to add shadows and little details and cute little things that just make it either more textured or little things that you can spot in the artwork. So this of course is also up to the style of illustration that you'd like to do. Uh, but I like to add this in at the stage where I can put the right color for the line work, I can make sure that all of it is balancing, and if any area of the illustration feels like a little bit too empty, you can look at adding like a few more leaves or maybe a little bee or something like this in this illustration, another book in the bookshop. Once you feel really happy with your illustration, it's time to share it with your clients for feedback. And here I like to sometimes share it in the context that we're actually going to be using the illustration. So if it's going to be the cover of a magazine, you can download a magazine mock-up and you can put it as a cover design just to showcase what it could look like. Uh, you can also show them the whole artwork and I think here it's really important to give them an easy way to give good feedback. You could use any tool where your clients can actually add feedback right to the correct area that they're talking about. So a tool like that could be Envision, for example, where you can actually pin comments to specific areas. If you have the Adobe products, you can also use Adobe XD in this way, even if that's not maybe the main purpose of it. You can actually share it for review and then you can have people pin comments to specific areas. I think having this uh, type of feedback tool makes it a lot easier so that your client is not giving general feedback like the window looks too big and then you're wondering like which window or <laughs> which area, is it the color, is it the outline? So having them be able to pin the feedback is super helpful. Another good way, of course, is to be in the meeting with them so that they can always clarify. So rather than sending them a file that they're just gonna look at and then give you feedback over email, that might be helpful and might be confusing. Uh, I think having a quick call of like 10, 15 minutes even is sometimes really helpful. So since we've been setting up our artwork correctly from the start, it will be really easy to export. So if your artwork is gonna be used for print, uh, you want to make sure you export it as a PDF and you include the bleeds. You also want to make sure that if you have any text in your actual artwork, you're making sure to outline or expand that just to make sure that everything that's there is going to be accessible for someone who has a different computer than you. If you're using a digital artwork that you can export, you want to make sure that your settings are to RGB color schemes and you want to make sure that you're using the file format that this person that you're sending it to is going to prefer. So in some cases they like to have the original, let's say Adobe Illustrator file, or in some cases they might want a PNG file or an SVG file, which becomes a smaller format. Because SVGs are basically another type of vector file, you might wanna check with the person that you're sending the design to which file format they like. If you have illustrations that have a lot, a lot of pieces to them, it could become a large file anyway. So have a chat with them of which format they prefer. If you like watching the illustration process, I think you will really like my video on illustration for packaging. So I'm gonna link that here in the video and thank you so much for watching and good luck with your projects. See you next time.